Well, hey again, everyone. This is Bob from Boss Rocks DIY Solar. And if you saw my recent video where I rebuilt my uh, solar water heater collector, um, and if you decide to do a project like this yourself, uh, this isn't one of those projects where you put it all together, hook it up, and just set it and forget it. Uh, this requires quite a bit of interaction to get the most benefit out of it. And I'll go through that, all that, uh, what it requires to get the, the most hot water you can get out of this thing. Now, first of all, uh, hopefully you'll have this set up like I do on hinges and a winch where you can raise and lower it and track the sun with it. Because that's where, where you're going to get the most hot water from is, is a trackable system. <clears throat> now, what I do first thing in the morning is I'll come in here and I'll look at the thermostat. And I've got uh, two sensors on my water heater, one on the upper and one on the lower. And this is showing the upper temperature. And then I can just hit the switch right here. And that'll show the lower temperature. 120 degrees. And 129 degrees. About a 9 degree difference. Okay. Alright, so so I look at my uh, my uh, temperature of the water, heat, uh, water in the heater. And that's almost 130 degrees. So I'll come over here to the thermostat. And I'll set this for 130 degrees okay and as you see now it just came on because i've got a spread there's a spread on this meter that goes from 1 to 25 so if i set the spread at 10 that means it'll take the collector temperature of 140 degrees for it to turn on the pump to circulate the water out of out of the collector into the water heater now First thing in the morning, you want your spread down low, like 10 or 15 degrees. It really depends on whether or not you have full sun or not. Now, today, uh, we've got uh, fairly cloudy skies, as you can see up there. So, um, a lot of energy is going to be lost going into that collector uh, with the sun going through those clouds. So I'll set my spread down, lower down to 10 to compensate for that. That way I'll get cycles out of it and still get hot water. If you set your spread too high, uh, the, the collector will never get hot enough to kick off and send hot water down to your tank, and you won't produce any hot water at all. But now, uh, take for example, uh, we have a full sunny day. There's no clouds in the sky. And then what you do is you'll increase your spread. So I'll show you how that's done. You go to D, set that, and then I can go all the way up to 25, 25 degrees. And if it's full sunny day, that'll give you your most hot water because 25 degrees per cycle is, is quite a bit of uh, hot water coming in, into your tank. All right, let me get this back to normal first. All right. Okay. Uh, so anyways, uh, uh, you know, during, during the middle part of the day, uh, when the sun's strong, you know, to high noon to uh, you know, early afternoon, you could set your spread up quite a bit higher, and that gets you that gets you most of your hot water you're going to get during the day. Then, as you get towards the end of the day, then you do exactly like you do in, did in the morning, and you'll set your spread down lower and lower and lower till you get to about 10. And uh, like I said, if it's a really cloudy day, but you can still see the sun, there's still going to be some infrared energy coming in, but you'll have to set it even lower, down to probably like seven or something like that. So, uh, anyways, uh, that's how the system operates, and as you can see, it requires quite a bit of interaction for you to uh, uh, get the most effectiveness out of this. And the other thing is too is is uh, as the temperature rises in the in the water heater tank, you've got to follow that with the temperature on the thermostat too. So, so if the temperature of uh, uh, the water heater is like 140 degrees, then I'll have to change this. To 140 degrees to match the thermostat setting that I see over there. 
Otherwise, if you don't change that, if you don't change that, what's going to happen is, uh, just a second, all right. If you don't do that, what's going to happen is, is that the, the water coming out of the tank is going to be so hot that you'll never reach your low temperature and it'll just keep on running continuously. And that doesn't give you as much hot water as it does when it's cycling. So there you go. Uh, uh, that's about all I got to tell you about this. I hope that gives you some tips and tricks there that you can use to get your system running if you decide to put one of these together. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.